Hi, my name is Rich Knight, and today we're going to be discussing basic mechanics, beginning with how to create a mechanical hand. When it comes to mechanics and animatronics, it's often considered by the aspiring makeup artist to be the crowning achievement of special effects makeup. When creating a prosthetic, it's the actor's own features that animate their clients and breathe life to our creation. But what about those designs that need to go beyond that of a standard prosthetic and defy the limitations of the human anatomy? This is where we enter into the realm of animatronics and mechanical effects. A mechanical hand is a perfect example of how cable control mechanisms function. And these are the tools and materials you'll need to build one. Once you've gathered all the required parts, measure them precisely and then carefully cut them to size, beginning with a PVC pipe. You may need to use a pipe cutter or a miter saw in order to cut the pipe with clean and precise edges. Cut the larger size 3 quarter inch thick PVC pipe to a length of 12 inches for the outer forearm. Now assemble the frame beginning with the base. Use the half inch T connector with four holes drilled on top and one at the center. This will be for the base. Using the larger T connector to attach the handle and the outer forearm, but don't glue it yet. Use the other half inch T connector for the wrist. Cut off both ends with a pipe cutter, then drill a large hole on top and a smaller one at the center. Make the palm armature with wood. Draw a pentagram pattern onto the wood board to represent the shape of a palm. This should be smaller than your actual palm so it fits inside an artificial skin as the core armature. Carefully cut out the pentagram pattern with a skill saw or miter saw. Use a Dremel tool to help speed up the process of sanding down and smoothing out the edges. Finish by hand using a fine to medium grade sandpaper. Prepare to drill the finger holes through the palm, beginning with the palm end cap. Measure approximately one quarter inch from the outer edge, which will be cut off later with a miter saw. Next mark where the finger holes will be drilled. Select a drill bit that's approximately the same size as the fingers. Drill towards the wrist. Repeat this process for each finger. Use a miter saw to cut at the quarter inch line. This will be how you create the wrist end cap. Carefully drill out any areas at the wrist to make a smooth port for the wires that will be inserted later. To make the fingers, you'll need to create a realistic joint or hinge. Cut out the fingers and thumb to the desired length using the 3 quarter inch by quarter inch plastic tubing. A small hole is made a quarter inch from the top of the finger for the wire. Create a hinge in the finger by making an angled, triangle-shaped cut at each joint. There's three for each finger and two for the thumb. Don't cut too deep into the tubing or it may become weak. Flex the tubing by bending it back and forth. This will help the fingers to move better. Miniature hinges from a hobby store could be added for optimum finger movement as an option, but that's not necessary. Secure an eye screw to the center of the palm, about one inch from the wrist. We'll attach a wire later. Then thread a wire through the hole at the tips of each finger. Tie them off and secure them with hot glue. Test the strength of your knots and the wire by giving a good pull and flex the finger. This will also give an example of the kind of motion that you'll get. Each wire is then threaded through the inside of the fingers, passing through the inner palm and out of the wrist.
Now thread all the wires through the opening of the wooden wrist end cap and into the forearm. Thread each wire through the appropriate five holes drilled into the T-connector, which connects to the base. Use the smaller quarter inch polyethylene tubing to create a housing for the wire that controls the wrist mechanism. Secure in place with hot glue. Use wood glue to bond the wooden wrist end cap to the wrist. Secure the end cap in place with the extra screws that came with the metal hinge. Attach only one side of the hinge to the palm. Use wood filler or wood putty to fill in the seams along the palm and wrist end cap. Allow to dry completely and sand smooth. Connect the other half of the metal hinge to the PVC wrist, making sure it opens and closes appropriately. Use the provided screws and hot glue to reinforce. Cut a three inch strip of elastic band and staple it to the back of the hand, near the center about one inch from the top. Stretch it slightly as you carefully staple the opposite side of the elastic to the wrist. This will allow the wrist to bend forward when the wire is pulled and quickly flex back to its original position when released. Using a strip of flexible tubing, create a housing for the wire. Feed the wire through the base, and then through the inner forearm, and finally, out through the front of the palm, tied off at the eye screw. Secure any and all joints that aren't supposed to move with hot glue. Secure all your finger knots with hot glue for reinforcement. Tie and secure a plastic o-ring to each wire. This will allow you to operate your mechanical hand and will allow you to control the finger movement. It's recommended that the thumb and forefinger be tied together and moved simultaneously in order to allow for one-handed operation. Your finished hand will rotate left and right, the wrist will bend up and down, and all of the fingers will bend and move. This should give you a better understanding of how basic mechanics work. And that's our introduction to basic mechanics. I'm your host, Rich Knight, and thanks for joining us in the Makeup Lab. Until next time.